As some of us homeowners like up. to see the value go up. You really well, if you're selling? looking to sell. No, no I'm not then selling. Then what do you care? Well, I've got more equity in the place. Well, what does that matter if you're not I could, selling? I could borrow against it He's if I want. Oh, if you want to borrow it. Okay. Instead instead you should go to government if you want to borrow Well, more. here we are all we're worried about the home prices going up. Some of us who own homes are not worried about the price going up. We're, uh, we love it. This is the baby boomer problem relative to Gen but Z and Gen Y. Precisely. They need to buy. Precisely. And, and, it, can't, and it can't go up in an irrational way, so my friend. They need people like downsides. me to die so that, that we open up some houses. Is you that said it? that, not me. <laughs> David Barnson. Uh, he's, he's got his two cents worth already in there. Uh, I just want to show you the, the Wilshire Index. Now, this measures the value uh, of all listed trades, or listed stocks, I should say. Yesterday, one day alone, it was up $1.5 trillion. That's a stunner to me. And it shows, doesn't it, that that is the Trump rally. Well, obviously, to have it go up that much, the Dow, the Nasdaq, the S&P, bond yields going up a lot, it all indicates it was expectations of a pro-growth Trump rally. And what went up the most? It wasn't big tech. Financials, industrials, and energy, cyclicals that benefit from growth in the economy. That's a bullish sign. Is it a little ahead of itself? Maybe. Is it overpricing in some things? Usually it does, but it's still a positive, optimistic sign. But that's what the market wants, isn't it? Growth. They want economic growth. They want that. It's not the market who wants it. It's all people who exactly. want it. It's society who wants it. It's what we desperately need is growth. And they see they might get it with Trump. They'll, you know, better than they got with. Biden well, has. that's right. And, and what that means, by the way, is removing impediments to growth. Yep. Government can't create growth, but they can hurt it. And he can eliminate some of those things with high taxes, high business burdens and regulations. Got it. David, stay with me, please, for the hour. Under Armour. Way up. So they came out 30 percent and they raised their annual profit forecast because they're touting their cost savings initiatives under their founder, Kevin Plank. Um, he's also pushing the company to sell more sportswear at full price, which is good for margins. Why are you gritting your teeth like this, David? Well, my dad said I can't say anything at all if I'm not going to say something nice, and I really can't stand that guy. But we talk about him riding the ship. <laughs> he, he sells $500 million of stock. It goes down 80%. Then he comes back to write the ship, and the company's a money loser, and I just have a personal thing on this. Oh, well, there's an interesting You asked, by the way. I was not going to say anything. I was just going to sit here and snicker. It's my fault. Okay, yeah. I got it, David. All right, the match group. The Tinder parent. Uh, they projected that their fourth quarter oh, yeah. revenue would be below estimates. The stock is down almost 15% percent the message being sent to investors this dating app turnaround needs more time i think not maybe, working. maybe with the trump wind the dating isn't working because people are mad at each other about politics oh is oh, that yeah. your best shot i just came up with it right now <laughs> all right david on the markets this morning <laughs> more green a ton of green yesterday some more today especially the nasdaq it's up 200 points which is over one percent. David Barnson with us this morning. Dividend picks, please. And you're starting with, and this is a new one on me, Brockfield Infrastructure Partners. It's a new one for us, too. We're adding a new position in the portfolio. This is, Brookfield's one of the largest managers in the space. It's a 4% yield that they're growing at 6 7 or 8% a year. They're doing data centers. They're doing pipelines. They're doing Magic utilities. Words. Magic so words. they're building things, infrastructure yeah. for the country, and they're doing it profitably and well. Data centers are an extraordinary deal. operation. Big deal. Uh, Kenview, they're formerly with J&J, &J, a department of J&J. &J. Yeah, they were the Consumer Staples Group, which is about a third of J&J's business for decades. They spent Spun it off last year at its own company, so everyone knows their baby shampoo and some of their famous products. They're out on their own now. There's some activist hedge funds involved. They had a good earnings number. You can see it's up 3% today. We love the name. We're heavily in it at 18. It's up to 23. We're going to own it for many years, 4% yield and growing. Well, have they got a track record on dividend growth? Well, J&J &J was growing their dividend every year since the 1940s. And now Kenview just spun off last year, and they've grown the dividend. And they're both still years. growing it up. Yeah. We are not at 3% growth right now. We haven't been anywhere near 3% growth. And remember the report that just came out, the, the private economy was growing at about 2.5%. We have to get to 3% growth. Trump is totally focused on that. He, he liked to 35 to 4% growth. And I'm here to tell you, once you get the growth rate up that high, Stuart, you will start to see the economy bend the curve down. My favorite friend, David Manson, who's there with you, knows this to be true, and you start to be making progress in terms of reducing that burden of the debt.
Okay, uh, you can respond later, David. All right, I will, I will. A <laughs> limited time frame here, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, we want free speech on the Internet. We don't want the, uh, these, these tech companies using their platforms to silence conservative voices uh, like mine and David Bonson. <laughs> okay, that's an ideal opportunity to bring David in. Uh, Steve, I've got to go. <laughs> thanks very much for being okay. with us. I know we'll see you again real soon. David, Great. what do you think of these tech leaders and big, big business leaders cozying up to Trump? I want to know where the ones are that aren't doing it. What's wrong with these people? First of all, just out of patriotism, whoever won the election, say congratulations. You're a big leader. You have shareholders. You have employees. It's statesmen like to say congratulations, not to mention there's pragmatic benefits to getting on the good side. It's the way it works. I think it's very understandable they sent a real diplomatic congratulation, but I think there's something wrong with the people who did it. it, it even if Harrison won, I'd say the same thing on the other side. That's an interesting perspective. Okay, understood. Thank you, David. Thank you for sticking around. It's we been a pleasure. You. And I stole that idea from you. Yes, you did. Uh, yeah, I admit it. it. No problem at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Jonathan Turley had come up with it in the soundbite before. Make sure you didn't hear that. Might want to do it in the next two years because they could get the Senate. Ah, that's true.